Let's look at the distal ends of the radius and the ulna. The head of the ulna has a rounded articular surface. This part articulates with the radius. This part articulates with a key structure that we'll see shortly, the triangular fibro cartilage. The pointed tip of the ulna is called the ulnar styloid. The broad distal end of the radius has two articular surfaces. This large one articulates with the proximal row of carpal bones. This small surface articulates with the ulna. This point is the radial styloid. Here's the distal radio ulnar joint with its capsule intact and with its capsule removed. Here's the structure that holds it together, the triangular fibrocartilage. It's also known as the articular disc. It's attached to the radius here and to the ulnar styloid here. As the distal end of the radius rides around the head of the ulna, the ulnar styloid provides the pivot point. Eight small carpal bones form the carpus. Distal to the carpus are the metacarpal bones, numbered one, two, three, four, and five. The carpal bones are in two rows, a proximal and a distal. The bones in each row are attached closely to one another. The four bones of the proximal row are the scaphoid, the lunate, the triquetral, and the pisiform, which sits by itself on the triquetral. The scaphoid, the lunate, and part of the triquetral articulate with the distal end of the radius to form the radiocarpal joint. The distal surface of the proximal row articulate with the distal end of the radius to form the radiocarpal joint. The distal surface of the proximal row forms a deeply concave notch which the bones of the distal row fit into. The bones of the distal row are the trapezium, the trapezoid, the capitate, and the hamate. The capitate and part of the hamate project proximally. The bases of the five metacarpals articulate with the distal row of carpal bones. The first, the one for the thumb, articulates by itself with the trapezium. The other four articulates in a row here. The distal row of carpal bones articulates with the proximal row here to form the midcarpal joint. The projecting capitate and hamate fit into the notch in the proximal row. When flexion and extension occur at the wrist, the movement happens partly at the radiocarpal joint and partly at the midcarpal joint. When radial deviation and ulnar deviation occur, the action happens mainly at the radiocarpal joint. Here's the wrist joint, or rather joints, with much of the capsule removed and the two collateral ligaments here and here intact. Here's the radiocarpal joint. Here's the midcarpal joint. The radial collateral ligament goes from the radial styloid to the scaphoid and its neighbor, the trapezium. The ulnar collateral ligament goes from the ulnar styloid to the triquetral and pisiform bones. Here's the wrist joint with the joint capsule intact. The joint capsule is thick and strong all the way around the joint. On the extensor aspect, the capsule forms the broad dorsal radiocarpal ligament. On the flexor aspect, it forms the palmar radiocarpal.